Hi, Tony, KD8RTT, and today I'm going to do a review on the MFJ4125 switching power supply. As you can see, this is a pretty small little power supply. Uh, it's rated at 25 amps max and 22 amps uh, continuous power output. Um, it weighs about 3 pounds, and it's pretty small, as you can see. Um, it comes with all the standard kind of over voltage and over current protection, um, and it can operate at both 110 and 220 volts. Uh, input uh, which you set by a switch on the back. So uh, starting with the front panel uh, you'll see it's pretty simple. There's the on-off switch, there's an indicator LED, and there are two five-way binding posts. Going to the back panel uh, there's some um, wire terminals uh, that are rated for 5 amps max so it's a low power output. You've got your fan in the middle, um, your AC input, and your voltage select switch. All right, so um, first thing I did is I tested it, tested the uh, voltage output unloaded, and as you can see, it uh, came out at about 13.9 volts, which is perfectly fine. So it looks good there. Um, there's no external adjust um, control on this that so you can change that, um, but it shouldn't be an issue. Um, let's see what I like about it. Um, it's nice and compact. I mean, it's it's really small. Uh, it's easy to take portable um, if you're going somewhere, and uh, it's really cheap. Uh, it's 85 bucks, and you know, it's for a 25 amp power supply. That's pretty good. Um, it feels pretty solid. The case is a nice solid metal. Nothing's shaking around inside there. Um, of course, um, it is an MFJ product, and people have plenty of opinions on the quality of those, but um, not too bad, I don't think. Um, and of course, 25 amps is more than enough current to run a 100-watt uh, radio, so no problems there. Um, let's see, there's also no RFI, no interference caused by this thing on my radio under usage, which was nice, um, especially for the price. And it comes with a one-year warranty from MFJ, so, you know, I think most issues, um, like a cold solder joint or something that, you know, MFJ is known for, um, that'll pop up within a year, so I don't think you'll have really any issues with that. As for things I don't like, um, the binding posts on the front here, the little hole in there is one of the ways you can you know, slide a wire in there um, if you want. They seem a little small compared to some of the other ones I've seen. And um, you know, the other day when I was trying to use it actually, I didn't realize that I gobbed up a little too much solder on the wire I was trying to stuck, stick through there. I didn't have a soldering iron with me, so I had to kind of improvise away, but it didn't fit. So I uh, didn't like that. Um, I also kind of wish the binding posts were on the back um, you know, that way you have a nice clean front panel, just the power switch and indicator light. You wouldn't have wires. If you've got this sitting next to your radio, which I'm sure a lot of people do, or even, you know, above it, whatever, you don't have wires running from the front of this to the back of the radio. Uh, it's a little more cluttered. Um, so it'd be nice if the binding posts were on the back. Um, and the biggest complaint that most people have um, is the fan back here. It's really loud. Um, it really, really is loud. At an idle temperature, not running any load, it is quite audible and um, you know it's definitely annoying. Um, people have come up with a way to put a resistor in there uh, so the fans speed down obviously will quiet it down. I have not done that. Um, I, I don't know how that will affect ventilation long term but I can definitely say that the fan in this thing is very loud. Um, there's some ventilation on the sides. Both sides have some ventilation so I, I don't know what uh, that means in terms of changing the fan speed but yeah that's definitely a problem. It's loud. It gets in the way. I mean you're going to you're going to hear it and it's it's annoying um, the other kind of thing I don't like it's kind of hard to complain at this price but there's no sort of meters um, for current or voltage on it so I mean you can check it I, you know with a multimeter or something which is what I did um, but it would be kind of nice if it was displaying it and they're not that expensive anymore but um, I know that it does change a whole lot of other considerations with case and all sorts of things so that'd be nice but not a huge complaint um, overall, I like it. You know, I was using a kind of an industrial grade, cheap eBay power supply um, before this, and it was working fine for a while. Then I ran into some issues where it just kind of died on me. I actually sparked out and died. And I decided it was time to get something a little bit more suited for my needs. Um, and at 85 bucks, I mean, it's a great deal. You're not going to find um, anything, you know, made for ham radio that's going to compete with that price point. Um, and I like it a lot. So I would definitely recommend it. 
Um, you know, just be mindful that the fan is loud and, and that sort of thing. Uh, there is also a model. It's a, very, it's a little bit more expensive. Same form factor, except it has Anderson power pools on the front. Um, so you can connect right into them. And uh, that's kind of neat, too. It's, you know, it's, otherwise, it's the same thing as far as I know. It's just got the power pool. So. Overall, I like it, and I would recommend it if you're looking for a power supply, maybe for your first HF radio or a secondary one, you know, something where you're only going to be pulling 20 or so amps um, out of it. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. But uh, all in all, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, we'll see you next time. 73.